Hi F2Ps, it's Goodfellow here from F2Pa.com and today we are checking out Travian Legends and we are checking out the Fire and Sand uh, server or game mode, I'm not sure. Um, either way, uh, Travian is a free to play war based strategy where you build up your own empire, um, form new villages, expand your territory and then kind of form alliances with other players or battle other players that kind of thing. It's a time and resource management type game. Uh, we've played the Travian game on the standard servers for a little while. We're now doing a first look of the Fire and Sand. Uh, so this is the new release to the game. I think it's an annual 2017 um, kind of special server that's been added. Uh, and with that, they have expanded on the standard three um, tribes that have always been in the Travian games. So you've got the Gauls, Romans, and the Teutons. Teutons? Teutons? Teutonic Knights? Teutons. Okay. I'm never sure. <laughs> uh, you've now got the Egyptians and the Huns. So the Egyptians have added in an, an extra um, new player appropriate uh, tribe. Uh, low time requirements. Get more resources. So... Um, a really kind of well-rounded new player tribe. You've then got hardcore mode. So the Huns are kind of super, super aggressive and strong cavalry, uh, reliant on others for protection. So you're going to have to make sure you make your allies because they don't offer that much uh, in terms of defense. Um, and so we're obviously going to go with the, the Egyptians because hopefully with the... Um, expanded uh, kind of new player features you know with the low time requirements and more resource available it will allow us to show a little bit more um, so we can choose whereabouts in the world we wish to start presumably the Huns will mainly start over here and the Gauls and everybody else kind of over here um, but uh, you know we're gonna go where, where we've been recommended because presumably more of our own tribes people will start around here. Uh, okay, so it's going to try and... We, we can skip the tutorial, I think. Uh, unless it's going to tell us anything major about the Egyptians. No. Okay, we'll skip the tutorial. Boop. And to get you started, I will give you the buildings and advantage from the tutorial. Further tasks and rewards are awaiting you. Okay, cool. So, we get... Uh, 10 premium gold currency, rally point, which is one of our buildings, woodcutter level 2, clay pit level 2, cropland level 2, and then travian plus for 24 hours. So these are our resources, but we'll show them all in a moment. Um, the, the way travian works is that it's, it's very much a kind of do s something for a few minutes and then log out for, you know, a couple of hours. It's not something that you can kind of keep playing and keep playing and keep playing until you get to the late game where you've got kind of multiple um, villages. Um, have we just got no sound? It's really weird. Okay. Well, I mean, I, you know, you can just listen to my dulcet tones. Um, so, yeah, so there's not much to do in the early game, and we, ha we will have enough to show because we've just started the tutorial, but it really does plateau. Um, after a while where you're waiting on queue timers, you're waiting on resources to uh, be produced. Um, but in the late game, you know, lots of villages, lots of micromanagement, lots of attacks. You know, pr potentially by that point you have an alliance with other players, so you're organizing you know, who you want to take on uh, and that kind of stuff. Um, so there are a few differences with the game, and I'm going to kind of show them, but I'll, I'll give you the general... Um, workings of Travian to start with how the, the general game works. So you have your own village um, and we can access this through the buildings. Boop. So here you can just construct different buildings. Um, I don't know what's going on with <laughs> My mouse is just playing up with farming. Um, okay, so you click one of the building sites and you can click the various uh, buildings that are available. They all take up resources and um, some of them have prerequisites, so you'd need your main building to be level 3, your warehouse to be level 1, and your granary to be level 1 to unlock the marketplace, which is fine. Um, 
You've got task overviews. They're, they're kind of like quests because you get rewards for them. So construct a cranny. If we do it, we'll get those rewards, um, which is fine. But they end up they end up kind of becoming quite linear because you can't necessarily do one of the later quests without doing one of the other ones. So there's like only because I've already played it, I know that you you will get a task of um, buy something on the the auction, but you can't buy anything until you've got silver, and it requires completing one of the other <laughs> quests before you've got silver. So it becomes quite structured in your progression for the early game. I'm sure you know as things open up a little bit, you've got a little bit more leeway with uh, with what you do. Um, so that's that's it. So you know we click a building, and then we start. Um, we, we click a site. We click which building we want to go with, and then it's going to take four minutes and twenty two seconds to actually complete. So while that's happening, we can also check out our resources. So this is where we've got our clay pit, we've got our forests, crops, and our iron mines. Um, and so what have we got? So we've got iron mine. That's one of our quests. There you go. All the construction of an iron mine, and then we'll get one day plus twenty five percent bonus on the production of all resources. So even though you've got this flexibility to kind of do what you want, it makes sense to do the tasks because of the rewards that you get for them. Um, so that's going to take 7 minutes 30 on top of what's already been built with the cranny. Now we can't add any more. You've basically got a two slot um, build queue. Anything else that we want to add can be added to the queue but it then starts costing your premium gold and it's like I think it's like one gold to add an additional um, unit to uh, to add an additional build it to your queue uh, and then it, it won't uh, rush it I and mean, we can complete construction immediately and it'll cost us uh, two um, gold to do it. So we've now got them we've now got our production coming in quicker and these have got ticks in them, so we can collect our rewards for those. And that's kind of where we're at with it. Um, kind of looking over a lot of this stuff, you've got your hero. Um, you can kind of change his appearance and, um, you know. If, I don't know whether they offer different options depending on the uh, the tribe that you choose. I don't think so. This a lot of these. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're fairly standard. Um, oh no, I want to stay on here. I don't know why that's. Why is that trying to click up an extra dialog box? Okay. Oh, do I just have to save this first? Okay. Now can I do it? There we go. Um. So you get attribute points. You will. Pick these up and you can improve your hero. You'll get different gear and you can improve him that way. Um, and that's kind of what the game is mostly about. It's about building up your your village, upgrading your buildings, then constructing units to engage in attacks and that kind of thing. So here we have different players, my looks of it, uh, on our map. You can zoom out and you can see the world map. Now, this is where the difference between the two game modes comes in. Uh, in the standard game mode, uh, in normal Travian, you the aim of the game to win the server, and you can, can win the server, is to build a world wonder. Now these world wonders, they, they take up like millions of resources to construct, they take hours and hours and days to construct. They're not the type of thing that one player is going to be able to um, win on their own. Okay, You'll never be able to build one. You'll never One player is not going to survive if they're trying to build a world wonder because there are alliances that are also trying to build a world wonder together that are just going to come in absolutely wreck you. So the aim of the game really is to get into an alliance and then work towards that end task. And the first person to build a world wonder, because the first alliance, they win the game and then the game resets. And in general I think it's like I feel, I feel like I've read it was like 280 days, at least it was on the original Travian I think. 280 days is um, kind of like when the end game 
is kind of triggered or no, I think it triggers earlier than that but I think it kind of stops around 280 days so nearly a year that's how long these games last so you can imagine you know a year in how many villages you've got how big your empire is how much stuff you've got to do you just don't have that much to do in the beginning so that's how the normal trade works with uh, fire and sand obviously along with the introduction of the new um, uh, the new uh, tribes, you have a completely different win condition. It is a victory point condition and it is based on the alliance that controls the most locations. Now I believe it is these individual territories as opposed to these individual squares. So I would presume by controlling perhaps the most villages uh, in an area. So look what statistics say. Um, alliance points victory that's probably what we're looking at um, okay so alliances players regions victory so, I mean it's new server nobody's got any victory points yet um, so that will be based on how many regions you own and I guess larger regions will um, provide more victory points and that's how you win the game uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether you have to earn a set amount of victory points or whether when the game kind of hits the end game it uh, it basically just calculates who's got the most victory points let's have a look let's have a look because actually one of the things about the game is that the uh, the help is actually quite involved with it in itself so game rules and there you go. So let's find information about the current game rules. And um, that's not what we want at all. No, that's rules, rules. And um, let's go with late game. The World Wonder. So that's talking about um, the, the main game. Ancient relics, strange powers. Well, this isn't helping me at all, is it? Hmm. Let me go and find it, and then I'll be back in a minute. And we are back. So uh, I just went into the FAQ section where you can ask different questions and stuff. Uh, and just typed in Fire and Sand, and it's brought up Fire and Sand regions and victory points. So we've had a little bit of a scan over it. Uh, essentially, whilst you have the main Trevian game, um, which is kind of double the size of the the special maps and the special maps are brought out every year they bring out a different um, version of the main game with some unique win conditions uh, and that kind of thing and um, so 2017's is fire and sand uh, so broken up into eight different different uh, regions you have to control them and earn victory points by uh, them being part of your empire basically uh, and it's only open to alliances so you do need to be in alliance you can't control um, a, a territory I, I suppose I, I don't know maybe you could but basically to control a territory you have to control 50 you have to own 50% of the population they have to be part of your alliance so it takes into account all the other players that are in that region if they aren't part of your alliance then they are kind of holding you back from controlling it so you either need to get them on board or wipe them out if they don't want to join you it's like well, well you know I've got, I've got to kill you off then so I'm, I'm presuming that's why it starts uh, recommended the starting location for us uh, being in the uh, the south is it southwest I think it put, it, put us in um, on, on the world map so it's potentially going to start us around of the players with the same tribe. Not that I think it matters. I think you can be tribes with anybody, um, as far as I'm aware. Um, so it might not matter at all. Um, but yeah, so once you control uh, enough um, regions, you then get benefits and boosts and stuff like that. Uh, you get ancient powers uh, and that kind of thing. And uh, basically, it, it runs for, or is it, 200 days. Uh, so there's no World Wonder victory condition. It lasts for 200 days, and the alliance that gathers the most victory points at the end of the game wins. So this is a 200-day game. So you can see why there's, you know, the the pace of the game is as slow as it is. Um, 
with the other I've I've played Travian on a different account and it wasn't on the Fire and Sand um, so I was playing as the Gauls and I put a couple of hours into the game uh, checking out previously and you get to the point where you've spent all your resources um, and you're waiting to construct new buildings but you don't have enough resources to do it and the tasks that you could get resources from as rewards require you to construct buildings that you don't have the resources for so you have to wait for them to come the natural way you have to wait for your um, your resource productions to to tick over so production per hour you know 10 hours it would take and let's, so my lumber is 88 okay so just short of 10 hours for it to be filled up again so like i said it's quite a wait it's it's playing for a little while keeping things ticking over and then stepping back now you can pay for like the VIP and you've got extended queues and things like that which makes managing it a lot easier especially when you're at these later levels and you've got multiple villages and stuff you don't want to have to keep coming back like every 20 minutes just to kind of start something new happening you know you can keep a couple of queues going for a couple of different things uh, and it makes it a hell of a lot easier but as I said as you get further into the game there's so much more to do right now there's not um, and it takes a little while before you can even build up your barracks and then train up your units the, the combat system is it's pretty dull it, there's not really that much to it you would click um, you know a, an enemy village or uh, an oasis camp or the Natar villages that are the AI villages click them and then you would select um, you know which of your you, you know you click an attack you select which of your units you want to attack with and then just click go and that's that's pretty much it that then it's kind of hands off the keyboard there's nothing you can do uh, it all depends on the forces that you sent and the forces that you're going to come up against when they get there and then you get a nice little battle report telling you how well you did how many casualties you got what loot you recovered and that kind of thing so it's not the most interesting system and in fairness a lot of what you do is just kind of menu clicks here and there but the game looks really nice and uh, and as bad as it sounds that kind of for me adds a lot more appeal there's a lot of games that are like this but i think the graphics look bad so i'm kind of like man you know what if I'm, if I'm gonna have to look at something you know a couple of hours every day then i want it to at least look decent um so that's kind of there's there's not a hell of a lot to do. You've got your uh, your hero, and you can send him on adventures. <gasps> what adventures? Yeah, but it's literally I just click start adventure, and then that's it. He's he's now going on an adventure. That's that's that system. Okay, there's not much else to it, but that's because we're in the early game, late game. When you you know when you're talking to people, you're dealing with uh, your alliances and choosing who you're going to attack, which region you should go for next. It becomes more of a uh, these kind of games, I always see them as being more like a, a community, like a, a social network where you can chat with each other, but you've got you know something to do as well. You're playing a game together at the same time. So you've got that element to it. Early game, very slow, not that interesting. Something you would have to kind of stick with that you can play semi-casually. You know, It keeps calling you back to the game because you need to do stuff if you want to progress, but you don't have to sit there and play it for hours-long sessions. Um, so that's kind of it. That's everything about the new release with the fire and sand. There's, n but unfortunately, because you know we don't have a late game account or anything like that, there's not that much that we can show off. We can show you who the different, um, uh, who the different tribes are and what the victory conditions are. But that is about it. Um, but is the game worth checking out? I would say yeah, if you've got the time and you kind of like the idea of it being a long campaign and. Uh, having to be social and cooperate with other players and obviously war other players uh, and you want it to be long and there be a victory condition then uh, it's definitely definitely up there. Travian's been around for a long time um, and it's gone through some different upgrades and some different graphical overhauls definitely um, but I think it's a pretty solid MMO so worth checking out. So there you go. Uh, if you liked the video then please give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of them, do all sorts of reviews on old games new games alphas 
everything like that. You can check us out on Facebook and Twitter at F2P.com or over on our official website at www.f2p.com where again we do more reviews, news, videos, giveaways and all that good stuff. So thank you guys for watching. I have been Goodfellow, you have been you. This has been Travian Legends Fire and Sand. And hopefully we shall see you in the next video. Bye-bye.